who is responsible for this. So as we kind of build up for a conversation about the budget, um, Oklahoma City has a strong city manager system. And so Craig Freeman, who is the city manager, is like the CEO of the city. Like he gets to hire and fire everybody and, you know, has a tremendous amount of power. The city council is more of a policy body, so they don't, they can't come in and say, well, you, we, you need to do this or that or hire or fire this person. That's not their job. So, it, and then same with the mayor. He's just a member of the city council. We have a weak mayor system, so the mayor doesn't get a vote. They can hire and fire the city manager, though. So to be clear, they have the ultimate vote at some point. But the city manager is who gets to decide. And so when you get into conversations about, well, how can we how can we dig into this? And I, like you guys mentioned offline, I, I won't put you on the spot. If you want to talk about it, though, please do. That you, You've you asked certain employees of the city to, to clarify things. And sometimes it's via open records requests. Other times it's via just, I'm a concerned citizen. I just want to know. And, you know, you should tell me. And, you know, you've expressed, and I've experienced this too, uh, disappointment in some of the answers, like concern that maybe they don't quite understand what's going on or they're not as forthcoming as we would like. So that's one, that's one concern um, I'd like to kind of bring up. But then the second concern is, is like, again, who's responsible? So it's like you got the city manager, the chief of police, but then you also have the fraternal order of police who is the union that negotiates the police contract. And so I often hear well, it's not just us policymakers of the city, or it's not just hiring and firing the police chief or whatever. It's it's this boogeyman organization over here called the Fraternal Order of Police that has a tremendous amount of power. And so I guess let's talk about, in the little bit we got left here, let's talk about those two. So does anybody want to talk about the kind of trying to get information out of the city and what that's like? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had that experience often, and there are some amazing people working at the city that are working very diligently to make a better Oklahoma City. I would say the majority of people that are in the city of Oklahoma City as a job are probably trying to do that. I think the concern is that, you know, I've had certain phone calls where basically it's not that that person didn't know, it's just that person wasn't supposed to know. There was no built-in oversight for this person to have that information. And so then there's a missing piece here of like, well, between, you know, once it leaves this department and comes back to the accountants in the city side, where's the check? Well, if they're not, if they don't have a built-in check on the accounting side and the police are just submitting these things as they go, well, there's a great opportunity. Maybe we can interject some sort of accountability just to make sure that those numbers are there. And so that when we, do need to see what these line items are, not even for us, but for the police. If they need to go back and see how much they're spending on something so they can analyze their data and see how well they're doing in certain departments, then we have those numbers. They're already there. Building in these types of checks on numbers and data is important. And what I'm seeing is that we just don't have as many as we probably should with this much money moving around in a city as large as this. Yeah, and I mean, I think, too, it would be interesting to see, you know, you, you have in addition to officers, right, you also have a civilian staff who does various things. And I would, you know, I would like to know of the positions that they report having, like how many of them are filled by civilian staff versus uniformed officers? And also, like, do the salaries for these, like, where do they come from? Right. A civilian staff paid differently or from different funds than what uniform staff. And, and there's just that's the problem is that I have no idea, you know, and, and I don't even know. We don't know and they don't provide to my knowledge. I could be wrong. Like there's I haven't read everything. Um, there are like, where is the information that would let me know, like, who is employed or what number of people are employed under this or that program? Right. Do they have to keep all of that internal? Um, and are they protected, you know, was the FOP strong enough so that they kind of keep it so that they don't necessarily have to report that information, which I think is, is a possibility. Yeah. I, I mean, all good questions. Cause it, it's, it's really hard to say, I mean, uh, you know, and, and then when you look at their numbers and what they're reporting, you know, as far as what they're doing, 
you know, it looks like they're responding to a bunch of stuff that maybe it doesn't require, you know, police officers to respond to. And maybe there's better ways we could deal with some of those things. But it's like if they won't tell us, we just have to go based off of, you know, what we're hearing, which is that's the case.